Alright, this one's a bit fucked up, so bear with me. It started in a field, and there was two lines, one for normal criminals and one for lawbreakers. I noticed men, women, and children in both lines, but noticed the one for norms was being treated a lot better. I tried to sneak across, but decided against it after seeing friends in the lawbreaker line. Looking back on it, I should have hid. I yelled goodbye to a family member in another line before we were brought down a tight wooden corridor. I could hear a few babies and children crying. I was sat down in a monkey chair that stretched out my arms and legs to the point where they hurt. The wire that stretched it out heated up, leaving burns on my skin. Then I was electrocuted. During this, they were asking questions I couldn't hear the words of. They stuck a syringe in my neck and knocked me out. When I woke up, they made me cross-dress and perform in a military parade chanting something. After that, I was knocked out again with a syringe in the neck. This repeated multiple times. In the last use of the monkey chair, I was shown a map. I could make out Europa, which made up Italy, South France, Spain, the Balkans, and Albion, which made up Ireland. Something was said about alliances in the Great War. Not sure which war would I was asked, so why are they working with them? After this, I was knocked out again. This time I was on a boat without a paddle or anything, quite literally up a creek without a paddle, while something playing over speakers. At the end, I was met with some type of bearded mannequin and asked questions, the last one being along the lines of, why do we do this, why are we here? I answered with, to serve the party, thinking I could try and act like I was agreeing. I was zapped and told by the mannequin with its radio man voice, no, we are here to make an example. I was dropped into a box filled with water and surrounded by crabs and lobsters as I began to drown. I woke up as I was torn apart. Now what the fuck was that about? This dream was on the 17th of July, 2020. The last couple of days, I've woken up, frozen, in fear. Last night, I think I reached a new high death count. I was having a dream in my dream, where I would appear in my middle school's unfinished building, but all of my friends would arrive there when they fell asleep too. But when we were all huddled around each other, I began telling them about a dream I had prior. I woke up to wake my mother up for work in real life and then went back to sleep. My first dream took place in the finished building of my middle school. I don't know why middle school, I am in high school now, and it was more death. All of the popular kids had portraits of themselves on their locker. There was a killer in my dream, and they picked off the normal kids, but the popular kids lasted longer. It was a constant scare. I'd turn a corner and be chased by the killer, or I'd walk to class and step in just puddles of blood. I guess I was considered a popular kid. One by one, I would see my friends' portraits get X's drawn on them. They would die. I'm pretty sure I was the last one left. And then, I woke up. The second dream where I fell asleep in the dream, everyone's consciousness were linked like in a multiplayer game. We were huddled in an indentation of a room where a janitor's closet was going to be built and I was in one of the two corners. We were telling each other stories, but when I started to tell them about the murder dream, a man in a cloak came around the corner. He slashed into two people in front of me, and I turned around and faced the corner. I quickly froze up in the dream and was just paralyzed with fear. I ended up going back to sleep. It's as if I was bed bound there and rinse and repeat my friends were all being murdered once again I haven't watched a scary movie or played any games the only violence I've seen from the past couple of days have been from a battle royale video game Apex Legends I was transferred to another dream after dying 
and waking up a couple of times. This time, I was in the passenger seat of a limo. I was being driven by a chunky man in a butler's uniform, except he went crazy and drove me into the tunnel of a train. I jumped out. I feel like I had a lucid moment then, just briefly, and I realized the train was coming. The man in the car had committed suicide and wanted to take me with him. I ended up flattening myself against the wall, bracing for impact. The train came and went, and I was running towards the exit of the tunnel when I woke up. I was completely frozen. My throat was dry and my eyes were very strained. I was so scared that if I closed my eyes, I'd be chased down by a murderer. I was extremely tired and wanted to go back to sleep, but I sucked it up and woke up for good. I was afraid I was still sleeping. The night before tonight, I had a normal dream, but I had extreme difficulty waking up for real. I had woken up about five times. I have a window and a mirror to the right of my bed, and every time I woke up in my dream, I would look into my window and try to identify the forest behind my house to see if it matched up with reality, or I would try to lift my legs. I forgot the name of the stretch. This happened several times, and by the time I was actually awake, I barely had enough energy to lift my head up. It was as if someone was sitting on my chest and my body was paralyzed, like my body was trying to put me back to sleep. It's 12 o'clock and I'm scared to go back to sleep. I don't want to die. I would have kept in that bloody dream of seeing all of my friends get murdered if my alarm hadn't went off. I don't want to wake up several times and feel exhausted when I finally do. I have a cross above my bed, and I don't normally have nightmares. I'm not extremely stressed about anything right now. I haven't eaten any spicy food. I was just wondering if anyone had some advice on how to go to sleep, or any guesses on what all of these dreams mean or why I can't wake up in most of them. I haven't dreamt in months. This is the first time I'm genuinely scared to fall asleep. My name is Desiree, but in the interest of some identity protection, I'll send you the names that are pseudonyms for the people I dreamed about. My boyfriend, Brian, his mom, Susan, and his dad, Edgar, are the main people the stream focuses on. My friend, Noah, and his wife, Candace, are also featured in the dream briefly. In the dream, my boyfriend's father, Edgar, had a mistress. I forgot how he found out because dreams are like that. You just know facts without explanation. Edgar's mistress was in her 40s and he's in his 70s, so it was like hitting the lottery. She was very pretty and funny. I never got a name in the dream, so for context, we'll refer to her as Mistress. Susan called Brian crying, and he's the one who told me about Edgar's indiscretion. Susan's therapist told her to go to Washington, D.C. and to stay at a hotel so that she could be away from Edgar. Edgar wanted to have family dinner and invited Brian, myself, Brian's brother, and his wife out to a restaurant. I got there early and was sitting around waiting. A beautiful woman arrived and confronted me, somehow knowing that I was with Edgar and his kids. We talked and warmed up to each other immediately, and then Edgar, Brian, and his brother arrived. No one was happy to see Mistress except for Edgar. He allowed her to stay, and after we all went home, I expressed how much I liked her. Brian was so indignant that he yelled at me, but I can't remember what he said. The next day, somehow, everyone, including my family and mutual friends, were furious with me for liking Mistress. I mostly liked her because she didn't seem like a homewrecker. She was lovely but not cheap looking, despite carrying on with a married man, she was graceful. I also really liked her because in real life, Susan is a nasty, racist, control freak who's phony and would make a great politician because she's a liar. In the dream, Brian dumped me. I told my grandmother, who I was very close to. 
She just sat in her bed and refused to talk to me or answer my questions. I was sad and lamenting what happened, and she blatantly disregarded my feelings. I told my uncle who was downstairs what was going on, and he said that I was an asshole for liking Mistress. I couldn't understand why everyone was so angry over this. In my dream, close friends Candace and Noah were getting married, and they barred me from going to the wedding. I snapped and went on a rampage. I don't enjoy or have an interest in guns in real life, but in the dream I got a huge gun somehow. It looked like something from Call of Duty. It was huge, heavy, black metal, and it had what looked like an orange balloon on the top that dispensed the bullets. I started shooting everyone I knew because no one would talk to me about sympathizing with Mistress. I shot Susan and Edgar, even though Susan was supposed to be away at a hotel. I also shot my aunt and uncle. Everyone knew what I did and they were angrier at me. Somehow I wasn't arrested. Then I called more people I know and they asked me if I was coming over to kill them. I said no, but that's exactly what I did. I shot my grandmother, Brian, his brother, his sister-in-law, and my friends. There was no blood in the dream and only the satisfying sensation of destroying people who deserved to die. I had images of all these people and then I'd start shooting. In the end, everyone was dead and I woke up. I always have intense and realistic dreams. I write stories and most of the dreams play out like novels or movies because they are very detailed. It's disturbing to me because I never wanted to kill anyone before and in the dream I was so satisfied killing them that it was like an endorphin rush. I was too happy to do it. I can't figure out why I had this dream. My relationship with these people except for Susan and Edgar is pretty good. I killed people I don't like and then turned the gun against everyone I knew. It was sick. Alright. So about four to five months ago, yeah, it's been a while, I had this horrible dream. It all started with me waking up in the middle of the night, hearing distorted clown music. I'm older now, but I woke up as the age of 11. Weird. Changing ages in my dream. Whatever, that's besides the point. I'm hearing the clown music get further away, then hear the sound of a door being slammed open, the sound of a woman and a man screaming, and a gun being shot. I get a bit spooked and quote unquote, go back to bed. Next thing I know, I'm awake and at my grandma's house. I tell her about the night before, and she tells me about this clown that goes around killing people. No one knows when it happens, or if it'll be you next. Then she tells me that if you hear the music, or if you have the water running and it turns orange, He's near. I'm not spooked this time. I'm horrified. Everyone is living in fear, and the worst thing is, all flights out of the state are cancelled in fear of the clown shooting them down or the clown being on the plane and murdering everyone. We are all stuck in Michigan. Can't even drive out of the state. He could be near and kill you. That's when I start living in fear as well as everyone else. Next day, I'm at my grandma's again. We are trying to lock down the house so we can't kill her. She has guns that got delivered, knives, any kind of self-protection because my grandpa's already been killed. I've been taxed with the job of trying to get her a bodyguard and it's not looking pretty. I'm downstairs and so is my grandma. My mom and dad are upstairs locking down that part of the condo. She had a clown-proof basement installed. I don't know how that happened. And acts as a shelter for when the clown is near. My parents come bolting down the stairs, saying out of breath, We hear the music. He's near. We run downstairs and out of nowhere, a bodyguard appears. He tells us to stand behind him. He has a bulletproof vest on. We hear the sound of the music, then a man screaming, and the sound of a gun being shot. Then the music stops. He disappeared 
like every time he murders someone. We can go back upstairs. It's dark out. I sleep over at my grandma's house. It's the next day now. I'm told that all of my stuff is being moved to her house. I'm living here with my parents too. As I'm texting my friends, I hear the music start and it's loud. I'm scared that he's at the house. I go to my parents, tell them the music is loud and they say, get the bodyguard, go downstairs. We'll be there in a second. I see my dad turn on the faucet and the water is bright orange. I run towards the downstairs door, but it won't open. It's jammed. The music starts getting louder and louder until the door swings open and the clown stands there. He's so scary and ugly. He walks towards me with a knife as I'm screaming, no, please, no, God help me. Please spare me and my family. I feel like the cold knife slit the back of my throat and I start getting dizzy. It reaches my lower back before the knife stops. I fall over onto my back facing the ceiling. He leans over me menacingly with a terrifying grin on his face. He then stabs my heart and everything goes dark. I wake up covered in sweat. I'm shaking and I'm really cold. The back of my neck hurts and so does my heart. And that's my crazy clown dream. I have a lot of weird dreams, but this one stands out. I don't know if I'd categorize it as a nightmare. It was very casual and nonchalant and at the same time disgusting, and to describe it as horrific just doesn't cut it. I was late to work at my last job, a job I had in real life before the one I'm currently at, and there was a traffic jam on the freeway due to a car accident. I sign a noise and decide to exit the freeway and, tur and take surface streets. The jam prolongs on the exit and I realize the accident was on the exit ramp I take. The ambulance is there and I see the big white sheet so I know there's going to be a body in my anxi and anxiety pools at my gut. Everyone around me and in front of me gawks at it. A pet peeve of mine in real life, why would you gawk at someone during their worst moment? But their gawking is different from usual. They are white in the face, someone gets out of the car to vomit. As I inch closer to the light, I can see it in the corner of my eye now. People are now acting erratic. They are getting out of their cars and walking up to it and touching it. Its level of grotesque state is so awful it's literally driving people mad. I finally look over at it. I say it because it's so mutilated. The human being, the person that could have been there, is completely gone now. What's left is a body flayed of its skin, limbs, and fat missing just exposed muscle. It's cut and cleaned perfectly and drained with blood like it's been treated by a butcher. And the flesh looks like salmon and beef. I don't know why, but this is somehow far more disturbing to me than some horrible blood gore scene. I asked a nearby cop why it's like that and why people are touching it, and he told me that the person who owned the body signed a waiver or something, saying he didn't want his body going to waste when he dies and he'd like it to be cannibalized because there's a famine going on. In my dream, it's a dystopian world where there's famine and scarcity and people are offering their bodies when they pass away. I just look over the body and now I see a random deli that popped up from nowhere and the guy's making hamburgers with human flesh from it. After I woke up, my first thoughts were about how violence against animals horrifying me and how I hate butcher shops. But I've always had to suppress this terror because it's supposed to be a normal, healthy part of being human. But this dream made me realize that I don't need to suppress it, it's normal and fine to be disturbed and having a plant-based diet is just as much a part of human history and evolution as eating meat. I've been an on and off vegan for the past three years, and this has been a wake-up call for me to go back to plant-based. Trigger warning. Major suicide. Death and death of dogs. The day started out before school, with my friends and a couple of musical theater dweebs singing Hamilton. I was Hamilton for some parts and someone else was, 
Nothing was concrete, but we were all jiving. It seemed like we were on the streets of Puerto Rico, but it was cool instead of hot. A girl who had bullied me, let's call her Sam, pinched me. We started talking, but it was obvious I did not like her. She talked about horseback riding, which was something she had never talked about before to me in real life. We then all get into school and start first period. We were all in my old middle school in the computer lab. We were able to use the money we had to buy stuff online as long as we had money to give out a tech lab teacher. I wanted to buy this $10 sweatshirt. A girl yelled out to everyone, there was a way to get a free gift card. You just had to go to a website that was called giftcardatseizme.com. It was convincing because she had items she had bought in her hands. Looking back at the sweater I wanted, I decided this was the best way because I didn't want to bother my mom for money. Weird fact, it was a gray sweater saying something like, Mr. Freezy and some Japanese text. But it had the magician shop from Shoujo Subaski printed on it in black and white. Like everyone else, I went on the website and it downloaded a virus. It gave everyone a task to do. Mine was this weird Pokemon puzzle with an off-brand pixelated Hitmonlee there. It was like you have to fill up the squares according to the direction, but the mouse would highlight everything. At this point, I realized I fucked up. I tried opening Task Manager at this point, but it wasn't even opening up. There was a teacher coming around, and she sighed and asked me for my student ID. I booked it. I ran across the third floor to the first and went to go to the fourth floor to confuse security. But there was a kid with a medical ID bracelet and a teacher proclaiming that he's autistic. The kid was frozen to the corner, stiff as a board, but his eyes kept on darting around and his lips kept moving. I ran at this point until I was starting to realize the school probably wasn't tracking me down because there was probably 500 other students. I walked around the school to the guidance office but not going in. At some point, there was a bunch of probably emotionally support dogs in the computer lab, all sitting at each student's seat, watching the screens with a virus on them. Then, they all started dropping. I think they were adult golden retrievers, and I still have no idea why the school had that many dogs by the hundreds of the looks of it. The principal was irrational at this point. This is where my dreams started looking like manga panels. He was yelling at anyone to fess up to the crime. I knew who told us to do it, but I kept on rationalizing that I did not kill those dogs. Then a herd of students rushed to the stairwell, all of them in manga panel black and white flinging themselves down the stairs. If they weren't dead, they picked themselves up, run to the mountainside where they jumped to their deaths, hundreds of middle school kids. I don't know if they feared trouble or they couldn't live with knowing what they did. Dream Me believed the second one. This is where the Dream Me started walking over to the principal. If I could confess, this would all end. Then I thought back to Sam. Sam who gaslit me. Sam who would punched me. Sam who used her depression as an escape for her actions. Sam who pretended to be my friend. I had decided to tell my principal that Sam did it. But then I woke up. I had a nightmare last night. I usually don't care much if I had a nightmare, but this one has stuck with me all morning that I'm thinking there has to be a meaning I'm missing. So the dream starts off with my normal household life and some events lead up to me having to pick up my brother from somewhere. 
So I'm driving and when I get to the highway, my car starts going uncontrollably fast. And I'm at the point of the highway where I'm high above a bunch of other places and streets. So the car goes so fast and when I try to turn my car, it just flies off the road and into the air. And after a while of being in the air, I black out. I wake up on a beach. The beach has people everywhere having fun, swimming, doing normal things, and wrecked. And the wrecked car is sitting right next to me. People aren't acting like something is strange, so I try to get back to the road, but there's no staircase like usual or anything to walk up to get back to the road. But I can see the road. It's right above me, and there's no way to get there. So I start running to the right, and eventually I stop because there's nothing but water. Then I start running to the left, and there's nothing but water in that direction. So basically, I realize I'm on a fucking island. I tap on the shoulder of an old man and ask him, how do I get on the road again? I can't remember exactly what he said, but he basically said something like, Oh, you don't know, you're already dead, it's all black and white for you now. Then his eyes get blackened and blood starts dripping from the walls of the lifeguard house. And I look around and everyone on the beach is looking at me and their faces are scary and bloody. Then the man says, Wait, you're not even supposed to be here, you're supposed to be down below. Then some hands come out of the ground and drag me down somewhere, then I wake up. I don't know if I'm wrong, but I'm assuming where I got dragged to is hell, but yeah, that's it. If any of you can give me any insight to what this dream may mean, or if you haven't had any similar dreams, let me know. And thank you, and sorry for the long post. Here is a disturbing nightmare that I had in July 20, 2018. I wrote it down back then in my dream journal and I thought I should share it here. I still remember it just as clearly, as to this day it remains one of the most memorable nightmares. The dream starts with me being on a bridge, in the middle of a vast area, surrounded by grass and plants. It was afternoon. You could see the sun setting in the distance. The sky was colored in bright orange, a place that would be very calm and relaxing, if not for a few things that awfully stood out in my vision. Looking up, the sky was filled with bizarre, sinister-looking winged creatures that as such I have never seen before. Some of them look like demons, some like angels, but not quite that too. Others were completely indescribable and alien. At one point, one such creature landed on the bridge and grabs my shoulders with great force. I pass out. My mind is drifting into loops of waking up and passing out again. I remember seeing bodies of strange creatures being hanged by ropes from the bridge as if they were being brutally executed. I remember being chased by violent entities, running away and getting caught, only to restart the nightmarish loop. I remember meeting a few gentle, non-violent creatures, but they were possessing powers so mysterious and out of this world, such that my fragile mind couldn't understand. I lose my consciousness once again. Eventually, I wake up in the morning on the bridge and meet another winged creature that helps me break out of the loop. He sends me out to a journey because he wants to teach me something. I walk away and before I know it, the night falls. The world around me looks strange as if things are not in their normal size and the lightning is unnatural. There is a strong uncanny feeling. I look to the distance and beyond a strange and round stone made structure. I see what at first I think is a dragon. I get closer and realize this is in fact a giant creature with gold wings that look nothing like a dragon. It notices me, and my mind falls apart. I wake up under the bridge I've previously been at, surrounded by water. In front of me stands a very big guy with a spear in his hand, which explains to me in detail about these creatures. He tells me they have a name, which he doesn't tell me, and they are an ancient part of this world. 
They are living between us, disguising themselves as human beings or animals, and only very few ones in our world know about their existence. They are pure evil, an abomination of nature. They can read our thoughts with ease and make distortions in time and matter. The mere acknowledgement of their existence gives me frightening visions. I see a few of them in a specific, very vivid, very vivid one. I see a girl who is living with her mother. She is closed in her room in total darkness, except the light from the screen and is searching for information on dark entities, demons in hell. She is typing out some obscure phrases that only few are aware of, such as the Hebrew phrase for a certain deep place in hell that nowadays almost no one knows or talks about. During my dream, I visit two such beings. My memory of the first one is fuzzy. I remember rain, fog, and confusion. I remember talking to something, and it tells me about his true nature. I feel deep fear, disgust, and helplessness. I feel almost as if I was cursed for life, and afterwards only due to our interaction with each other. The second being I visit is the girl I saw in my vision. Someone joins me and together we go to the building where she and her mother live. I didn't want to go, but something was pushing me on, as if I had no choice. The apartment in which we visited was extremely similar to my parents' house. We enter the place and see her mother in the kitchen with a frustrated look on her face. We go on, entering the girl's room, and there she is sitting in the dark in front of a screen. She treats us with arrogance and contempt. The air feels dry and there's this penetrating feeling of evil being projected from her, such as I've never felt before from any other person I met. Our conversation is not clear. It feels as if time is slowing down and accelerating. We both become weak haunted by terrifying nightmares and illusions. Nothing feels clear anymore. We stumble our way out of the room, walking as fast as we can. We see her mother in the kitchen again, but she is crying. It's so hard when they always know what we are thinking, she says. I agree with her, but I have no time to stay. I feel as if my very soul is not mine anymore and any thought about the things I know and see will put me at risk of losing my sanity. Me and my partner exit the apartment and go up the stairs towards the exit. There is a small closet with electric switches near the top. It opens up and on its own when we get there and there are different objects inside it. As we step down the last stair, the world is falling apart and time is going back violently. We are in that dark room again with the girl, going through the same conversation, the same events. We are having nightmares, illusions and visions of terrible things. We are losing our mind. We stumble blindly in the darkness, find the door and run away from the house as fast as we can. My memory cuts to a few days later. I sit in my living room with my family and watch TV. I get a message on my phone that contains a picture of a search engine page. I zoom in on the picture and somehow while doing it, the picture changes to a picture of the closet with electric switches near the top of the stairs. I do it a few times to make sure my eyes are not tricking me. It contains some sort of message. I show the picture to my father, but he doesn't say much, except agreeing with me that it is weird. The night falls and I'm going back to bed. I can't sleep and I feel on the verge of crying. 
something happens in the darkness of my room, and before I know it, I am in the girl's house once again. We talk about the things which I don't remember. This time she didn't feel as evil, but I still had a deep, uncomfortable feeling being around her. I go to her balcony to get some air. There is a small brown dog there, and he is running around in madness, as if he is possessed. The dog is barking, howling, going to different places in the balcony. In times, the dog would have strange spasms and would look directly at me with a smile full of sharp teeth. He, look, he looked awfully intelligent. I hear crickets, and the dog is hearing it too. He's starting to get excited. It was surreal because the sound of the cricket sounded like it was coming from up in the sky. Seeing how excited the dog is, I point up, showing the dog where the sound is coming from. I get the feeling that the dog wants to make some sort of peace with me. The dog turns to me and is somehow telling me that there is something inside of him that he wants to give me that would be as a sign of trust. The dog is trying to throw it out. His inner organs spill out of his mouth, disgustingly. He can't get it out. The dog sits next to me and opens his mouth. He wants me to put my hand in. Looking inside, I can see a mess of guts, strangely colored organs. They are moist, bloody, and beating. In a quick decision, I shove my hand inside the dog's mouth and feel inside. I feel something. I pull my hand out and start throwing up on the floor in nausea. The dog is throwing up too and spills out pieces of undigested food. In all of that sick, absolutely horrifying vomit mess, I see that the dog also pulled out a small, yellow flower. The dog hints me to take it, as this is what he wanted to give me. I picked up the yellow flower, unsure of what to think. I look at the flower closely, and soon after, my dream ends, and I wake up in my bed. Thank you for stopping by to check out the latest episode of strange and unusual stories. Tune in next time for the final part of Dreams and Nightmares. I would like to extend a thank you to Dr. Gangster's Horror Stories for joining me on this episode. Be sure to stop by and check out his content. Link will be down in the description below. If you have something strange and unusual that you would like to share, send me a quick email. If you would like to keep up with future content, make sure to subscribe and click the notification bell. See you all next time. And as always, I am your host, Marie, Marie Lives, Lives the Horror. The horror.